now available for the first time in paperback. Stop simping in the workplace. Men, learn what you need to know in order to protect your job from workplace predators with Stop Simping in the Workplace. Available in paperback at online booksellers everywhere. Better get the cool slow, y'all, because we're having us a barbecue. <laughs> Yesterday, AEW Tony Khan showed the business world that he is his own worst enemy as related to AEW's state of decline. Now, on Wednesday's episode of Dynamite on April 10th, Tony Khan decided to release backstage footage from the 2023 pay-per-view event All In with the altercation between former AEW wrestler CM Punk and Jack Perry. Now, in this footage, we were told that this was going to show what happened between former employee CM Punk that led to his termination. However, after looking at the footage that was presented as part of an angle with a feud between the Young Bucks, Nick and Mac Jackson, the EVPs of AEW, and the tag team of FTR, the footage basically proves the case of former AEW wrestler CM Punk regarding the entire incident. Now, in this incident, CM Punk is shown to be confronted by AEW wrestler Jack Perry, who has just had a match where he was talking about using quote-unquote real glass, but had an, a match where he was using this glass on an art rented automobile. And after they exchange words, CM Punk gets into a minor altercation where he shoves Jack Perry and then he gets into an altercation which allegedly Samoa Joe tells him to stop. And this is where Tony Khan gets embarrassed because in this sequence he says that he feared for his life when CM Punk got fed up and said that he was a clown and he quit. But according to Tony Khan, this was a situation where he feared for his life, but the video footage didn't show anything that was dangerous at all as related to this situation. Now, this entire incident was one that Tony Khan was hoping to use in order to create a covert contract between himself and the audience to gain sympathy. However, the audience on seeing the actual evidence in this video wasn't sympathetic at all. No, what people saw was a desperate attempt to try to get the ratings up for AEW or All Elite Wrestling, which has been struggling as related to the last couple of years since about 2021 when AEW peaked. And ever since then, ratings have gone into a free fall, and they've gone into a free fall in spite of the signings of multiple top stars such as Switchblade Jay White, Okada, and Mercedes Monet, formerly known as Sasha Banks. And all of these stars have not been able to do anything to stop the precipitous free fall of ratings as related to AEW uh, over the last two years. Now, AEW has been in a major ratings decline, and the common denominator for that ratings decline is Tony Khan, the owner of AEW, who has shown us all that he basically is a very dysfunctional individual and definitely is starting to fit the pattern and profile for beta males that I talk about in my book, The Man Crisis. And it's clear to me that Tony Khan really needs to start reading books like that I've produced, like The Man Crisis and Stop Simping, because it's his simping and his dysfunctional beta male paradigm that have taken all elite wrestling from being a top competitive organization to falling straight into the mud. And the reason why the organization is falling into the mud is due to his inept and incompetent leadership. And the main reason why AEW is falling into the mud 
is because Tony Khan is too proud to go and lead his organization. No, he's too busy being a friend to wrestlers instead of being a boss. And because he fears being an authority figure and upsetting wrestlers and disrupting his smooth world where he can be friends with wrestlers, what he's doing is basically trying to befriend people at the expense of his already declining business. Because over the last two years, AEW on television has gone from a TV show that was doing over a million viewers as related to television and was basically beating WWE's NXT to the point where the NXT had to be moved to another night and was doing so well that it was turning into a merchandise and licensing juggernaut for Jazzwares and also had a roster of really great talent. Unfortunately, because Tony Khan was not an effective leader, he wound up making a dysfunctional work environment, and he made a dysfunctional work environment because he didn't know how to lead his organization. And once wrestlers who were smart enough and critical thinkers like Cody Rhodes saw the handwriting on the wall, this is why Cody Rhodes, I believe, wanted to end his contract and go over to the WWE because Cody had basically made a mistake as related to booking himself as related to his whole hero character, the American Nightmare. That's one part of it, but that was all because Tony Khan didn't have the backbone or the stones to stand up to Cody and let him know that, yeah, you're, if you work for me, you're going to have to make your character go a certain way, but that his character wound up falling apart and they lost their flagship face. Now, AEW did have another flagship face in CM Punk, and CM Punk basically was a big draw for AEW. Unfortunately, CM Punk's lack of professionalism basically was the thing that led to the all-out disaster of 2022, where he had an altercation with the um, management, which was the Young Bucks and Hangman Adam Page, and that altercation basically led to CM Punk being stripped of the title and led to him getting a suspension. However, CM Punk was on a contract for an extended period of time, and as he was on this contract, Tony Khan looked to try to fix the situation, not by leading his locker room, but by separating wrestlers on two different shows, having the Bucks and Hangman on Dynamite, and having CM Punk, Thunder Rosa, Miro, and Malachi Black and other wrestlers on a show called AEW Collision, and this worked for a while until the all-in pay-per-view disaster. Now, at the all-in pay-per-view, what happened was CM Punk and Jack Perry had a bit of a beef, and they had this beef, and as they had this beef, it eventually turned into this altercation, and this altercation between CM Punk and um, Jack Perry basically was the straw that broke the camel's back, because this was the second time that CM Punk had basically disrespected Tony Khan straight to his face. The first time was at the all-in pay-per-view, where he basically talked bad about all elite wrestling right in front of Tony Khan, and the second time was at all-in, where he basically told him his organization was a joke straight to his face, and with that, CM Punk wound up getting terminated, and after CM Punk got terminated, the whole situation at AEW did not improve, because some people said, oh, CM Punk was the problem. However, CM Punk proved not to be the problem, because we see what happened at the April 10th issue of Di episode of Dynamite. In that April 10th episode, Tony Khan basically showed how dysfunctional he was by booking this segment with the all-in pay-per-view um, backstage footage. And this was basically done because he saw how over CM Punk was at WrestleMania and how CM Punk is still thriving and having success over at WWE. That is what has Tony Khan seething with anger. And as Tony Khan is seething with anger, he acted on his impulses, desperate to try to get attention and sympathy for himself. However, this attempt to try to get sympathy and attention for himself 
did not get him the ratings that he said that he wanted to get because he thought he could use this to get AEW's ratings back up to a million. However, what happened with AEW's ratings is that they only got 750,000 viewers and most of the chatter on social media was negative as related to this whole segment, which further embarrassed the entire AEW brand and basically tarnished the reputation of AEW even further. And it tarnished the reputation of AEW even further because it shows that the organization is not one focused on wrestling. No, it's a fiefdom for Tony Khan to be able to hire wrestlers to go participate in his dream matches. And that's one of the reasons why the ratings for AEW shows like Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision are dropping every week because Tony Khan did not focus on building AEW to be an organization for booking and developing its own distinct stars. No, AEW was primarily a place for Tony Khan to be able to sate his wrestling fantasies and be able to see his dream matches and not give the audience its own dream matches, and that shows with the way they have booked many stars, such as Wardlow, who was getting over on his own steam from being introduced on AEW programming and then on AEW Dark, working lots of matches where he basically got over with the crowd. And because Tony Khan didn't like Wardlow getting over on his own, what Tony Khan did to Wardlow was basically passively give him the TNT championship, but aggressively bury him. And as he buried Wardlow, he basically destroyed one of his wrestlers who could have been a top star and a draw that could have basically been able to get people to buy tickets. And as he buried Wardlow in a championship match, which he booked on the day that he said Mercedes Monet was supposed to debut, it, this basically started putting nails in the coffin for AEW because at this point, it's clear it's not about organically developing stars that get over on their own at AEW. It's all about him pushing the people he likes. And that's what he wanted to do with Mercedes Monet. That's what he wanted to do with, with Okada. And that's what he wanted to do with Will Ospreay, be able to manufacture stars. But that's not how the wrestling business works. No, in the wrestling business, you want to go out here and if you hear people getting over, you want to push those people and you want to push those people because that's how you make your money. That's how you draw people and get them to buy tickets for your shows. That's how you get people to want to advertise on your shows. But a billionaire like Tony Khan doesn't understand how business works because he's just used to having money and throwing money at wrestlers and throwing money at wrestlers to the point where he's basically looking like a completely incompetent person because he paid far more for stars like Jay White, Mercedes Monet, and Okada, and they are not proving to be draws as related to revenue. So this whole situation with this footage at All In shows how spiteful and petty Tony Khan is and how he's not focused on the business of wrestling. And because he's not focused on the business of wrestling, this is why AEW is on a similar to de decline to corporate run WCW once Ted Turner took his hand off the wheel. Once Ted Turner took his hand off the wheel of WCW with the merger of AOL and Time Warner, what happened with WCW because AOL CEO Steve Casey became W. The Warner Brothers CEO of AOL Time Warner, he didn't want anything to do with WCW, so he was looking to basically let WCW go into decline, and it went into decline due to really bad booking from Vince Russo, 
who basically had gotten a huge evil because of the success of the NWO. And as a result, WCW in 2000 went into a major state of decline as related to booking stories. And with the lack of stories, you had lots of great wrestlers like Booker T and Scott Steiner and many and Sting and many others basically stuck in really bad storylines. And WCW's product just went on this just tremendous decline to the point where WWE wound up buying WCW for pennies on the dollar. And it was sad because World Championship Wrestling was the place to be from 1995 to about 1999. And the NWO storyline had everyone excited. I mean, this program basically beat WWE for the first time when it was WWF, and as a result, because of the competition, we got the Attitude Era of Wrestling. And AEW looked like it was going to give WWE competition, and possibly was one of the reasons why we got Cody and the new Renaissance Era, but as a result, sadly, what has happened, because Tony Khan is his own worst enemy, and is competing against himself, what he's done is basically take a promising wrestling organization with a lot of great talent, and instead of us focusing on that talent, what has happened over at AEW is the entire organization has gone into a just horrific state of decline since its debut in 2019. Because I remember watching AEW in 2019, and Cody and all this great talent coming along, and we getting just absolutely great matches and great stories. But because Tony Khan didn't focus on the business and focus on improving the business, AEW wound up with an Achilles heel. One was Tony Khan himself. The other is the fact that Tony Khan is so caught up in his ego to the point where he won't hire a booker. And because Tony Khan did not hire a booker, many of AEW shows basically were jumbled and unfocused because there were, one, no characters outside of Abaddon and maybe a couple of other people. No, a lot of people were not taught to develop characters and that really hurt their product. And without characters, you cannot have anybody to drive a story. And without characters, you don't be able to drive the story. It's hard to have feuds outside of the few that they have. I mean, they had a few characters. You had Abaddon, you had Thunder Rosa, and you had Miro. These were wrestlers who had some skill at developing characters. And Tony Khan didn't focus on developing characters. No, because he was so caught up in his fantasy about being around his favorite wrestlers. All he was looking to do was wait for WWE to release wrestlers and New Japan Pro Wrestling to release wrestlers to develop characters. And the sad part is because he wasn't developing characters, he didn't see how this was going to impact his business because wrestling is a character-driven business and characters drive stories. That is one of the main elements of wrestling that is very similar to comic books in that characters drive story. And since characters drive story, if you don't have characters, you're not going to have much of a reason to watch the show. And that's where AEW started to fall apart because it didn't answer that critical question of why should we care? Why should people care about watching AEW when basically every match is random and basically on the whims of the owner, Tony Khan, and not something that the audience wants to invest in. I mean, with wrestling, people have to invest in the characters, like in the case of WWE with the two, three, four year storyline of the bloodline. People have to invest in the characters to care. And the sad part is AEW didn't develop characters and develop stories, and this is what led to the absolutely dreadful booking at AEW, where wrestlers are booked in random matches and constant tournaments, but nothing leads to anything paying off for the customer at a pay-per-view, and the few storylines that they had, like the Devil storyline, which featured injured wrestler MJF, who was the world champion, that storyline basically meandered for months before paying off at World's End, 
and World's End basically started the beginning of the end of AEW and really shows how this organization has gone into, again, a horrific state of decline because of the te uh, incompetent leadership of Tony Khan because what he did with that footage of CM Punk and Jack Perry basically is the kind of behavior that some nerdy junior high school kid would do in an effort to get back at somebody and look to get back at somebody because they feel insecure and inadequate about themselves and insecure and inadequate about the decisions that they made as related to a professional situation. Because the way Tony Khan basically handled the entire CM Punk situation showed how much of a bitch he actually is and shows how much of a bitch he actually is because he came from the back and didn't look to lead his wrestlers because, and that's the reason why he got disrespected by CM Punk at that all-in a media scrum because he didn't have the ability to go out here and command respect and this effort to try he's trying to get back at CM Punk instead of looking out for his wrestlers because with you having TV time again TV time is precious and TV time needs to be focused on developing your stars TV time needs to be focused on developing and getting over talent but instead of looking to get over all of this talent that's on his roster, I mean, Tony Khan has over 200 wrestlers and a tournament for a tag team titles. And instead of looking to create a new star such as Top Flight, which could have easily taken those titles and turned them into something, instead of looking to develop his own stars, we get a rehash of the Young Bucks versus the FTR, which will not really merit anything at the pay-per-view. It won't really merit anything because the EVPs are basically trying to play themselves as heels, but are actually the villains of AEW because it was their jealousy of CM Punk that led to this entire situation. The Bucks, I believe, were jealous of the success of CM Punk being a big star and getting the big draw not understanding that cm punk was basically over for years in the indie circuit over with wwe and instead of understanding his job was to draw and to be used to build up new stars they they went out here and again turned it into a fiefdom and the fiefdom is just basically falling apart because AEW has no leadership at all that wants to take responsibility and that's textbook beta male behavior because when you put a beta male in a leadership position the beta male will will not be able to take responsibility because they want to be a friend and they don't understand a leader can't be a friend a leader has to be objective a leader has to assess situations and assess um, the business of a, an organization and again a leader when you're in wrestling has to hear the crowds cheering for people has to work towards developing and building up talent by giving it pushes based on how they're getting over and look towards working to develop those individuals into stars that people care about enough to want to tune in every week that is the job of a person who is the head of a wrestling organization and a lead booker a lead booker's job as a writer is to sit there and watch the matches objectively listen for the cheers listen for the chatter listen to hear people getting over and this is where tony khan is remiss because here you had at AEW, and I can count multiple stars who were getting cheered. Abaddon was one that was getting cheered and getting over. Miro was getting super over and on his way to stardom. If And if they had put the AEW championship on him, they would have be going out here creating their own first big superstar. And Wardlow would also be another AEW superstar. All three of these wrestlers were three that basically were ones that could have been AEW superstars along with people who worked their butts off like timeless Tony Storm. But instead of Tony Khan working organically to develop AEW originals, what Tony Khan has been doing is going out here 
and importing former WWE and New Japan Pro Wrestling stars and looking to hope to use the popularity that they have overseas and with the WWE in order to build his brand. And that's, again, a cowardly beta male thing to do because what you're looking to do is parasitically get attention from people because this is what beta males do. They look to parasitically get attention from people by attaching themselves to other people. And that's what Tony Khan has been doing with his wrestlers, looking to attach himself to these wrestlers to get his organization over. But that's not how you get wrestlers over. No, you get wrestlers over by them establishing and creating a great character. And then as they create a great character, what you do is introduce those wrestlers to everyone in your wrestling world. This is what made Vince McMahon successful because he always knew how to introduce a wrestler to people. So this is something Tony Khan doesn't do. What Tony Khan does is book people and then all of a sudden give you a shock um, entrance by the person. But people need to be, get to know the character. And this is why guys like Scott Hall, the late Scott Hall, who became Razor Ramon, became a superstar in the WWF because Vince McMahon took the time to craft a series of packages to let us get to know Razor Ramon's character because before this Scott Hall was wrestling as Scott Hall and he wrestled in WCW briefly as the Diamond Stud and he really didn't get over like that much in WCW because of the way they introduced him but when Scott Hall became Razor Ramon he became an icon of 1990s wrestling and became a superstar all because they took the time to introduce him through that series of vignettes establishing his character, establishing his story, and giving us something to care about as related to his character and his story. But that kind of care wasn't done with popular wrestlers like Switchblade Jay White, who basically fell into an abyss and fell into an abyss because Tony Khan basically didn't have a plan for his stories, didn't have a plan for him at all, and put him in some really terrible angles with wrestlers like the Guns, who basically were struggling to get over, and that basically wound up damaging Switchblade Jay White to the point where he basically wound up getting jobbed out by um, Billy Gunn, and the whole situation is embarrassing for AEW, because here you had a top talent who was over in Japan, and he didn't get over, and the same thing that happened to... Switchblade Jay White is happening to Wardlow in that he's basically getting buried because Tony Khan has lost interest in his latest plaything, and as he's lost interest in his latest plaything, he's gone and moved on to Mercedes Monet, Okada, and Will Ospreay, who I believe will regret signing with Tony Khan because he doesn't know how to book wrestlers, he doesn't know how to book talent, and again, doesn't know how to develop and book wrestlers as characters for stories. No, because Tony Khan doesn't know this, his whole organization was embarrassed at Wrestle after WrestleMania because WrestleMania looked like a huge spectacle and CM Punk looked like a star at that spectacle. Meanwhile, I was watching after the NCAA game, AEW Collision, and that show just looks like complete garbage right now because of the, not because of the wrestlers, but because of the booking. There's no reason to care because Tony Khan doesn't book wrestlers for stories and feuds. No, he books them in random matches, and the random matches basically are something that, to, that keep you from tuning in, and the whole production feels like a mess compared to when CM Punk was in charge and part of running AEW Collision. AEW Collision under Punk felt like a show that had stakes, had stories, had characters and story arcs, but once he was fired, the show has become just like AEW Rampage, which just comes across as a squash show similar to Wrestling Challenge or WWF Superstars, where wrestlers come on beat up local jobbers and squash them and everybody goes home happy but no stories or anything advanced similar to what happens on shows like WWE Raw or Smackdown. No, everything is booked on the cards of AEW shows like it's telegraphed and you can basically predict who can win. I mean, I can look at the card of a collision, a dynamite or a rampage and basically 
predict who can win, whereas with WWE, there's always some sort of surprise, and it's that element of surprise that makes WWE shows that much more compelling. And when I look at AEW, again, when I look at it, it's just really sad. This organization had so much promise. It had so many great talents that were actually out here putting in that work. And you had wrestlers who really cared about their work. But when you look at AEW right now, as related to things, Tony Khan is too in his feelings about the success of WWE to focus on trying to improve AEW and make AEW the best it can be. No, he's in his feelings because CM Punk basically punked him and he's punished Jack Perry, one of his four pillars. He yanked one of his four pillars out and as one of his four pillars has been yanked out and Sammy Guevara has basically not performed up to the standard of a pillar, MJF has been injured and Darby Allen is injured. ABEW has lost its pillars and is starting to fall into a state of collapse. That's what's happening over at AEW. And again, Tony Khan basically showed the world he's not built for this wrestling business. No, he's shown the world that he is a petty little man and a petty little man who puts his own feelings above his own business. He put his feelings above his own business because he was so in his feelings about CM Punk, he sought to punk him. And I'm, I know that for a fact, if WWE is smart, they'll just capitalize on this on next week's Raw. And on next week's Raw, they will get Raw and make a quiet swipe at Tony Khan. And that will basically embarrass him to the point because this moment right here is on the level of finger poke of doom bad. I mean, this level, this episode is one of the worst I have seen. And I've seen almost every AEW episode over the last four to five years. I mean, I have seen basically every AEW episode and this one was a complete disaster. And ever since again, world, and it's been like the beginning of the end of AEW, and it seems like we're in the middle of the first act of the end of AEW, a organization that had showed all of this promise and success, but sadly, it could not actualize its potential because its beta male leadership basically doesn't know how to set a course and direction as related to the company, doesn't know how to set a course and direction as related to the company that could help it take it to the next level. I mean, you've got the, all the talent in the world at AEW, you've got great talent on the roster, but sadly, you've got a chef who can't cook in spite of gourmet ingredients. Again, all of these great wrestlers should be in great big feuds and great fantastic matches. I mean, you've got talent dying on the vine like the Murderhawk Monster. Again, Murderhawk Monster basically just sitting around in catering. Guy should be a major threat. And you've got so much great talent just, again, sitting around. you got Miro, who should be in contention for a world championship. I mean, Guy was showing us how he could handle it as a TNT champion, basically took that belt to the next level. But instead of booking that talent, what Tony Khan does is not assess his talent and see where it's going. No, we've got matches that are all over the place. We've got belts that were prestigious, like the AEW International Championship in limbo with Roderick Strong instead of being passed on to somebody who can get it over. I mean, the whole organization is a complete mess, a complete mess as related to its overall structure, and it's all because Tony Khan is a boy running a wrestling league and showing us all how much of a man in crisis he is. He's a man in crisis because he doesn't know how to be a man, and he doesn't know how to be a man enough to lead his organization. Now, if you want to learn why guys like Tony Khan basically wind up failing in life due to the dysfunctional way they have been raised, you can pick up my book, The Man Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Man Crisis at other online booksellers like Draft the Digital, Google Play, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, and Target. And if you want to read the book that pays tribute to my love of pro wrestling, you can pick up my book, Isis, The Main Event, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Man Crisis at other online booksellers like Smashwords, The iBookstore, Google Play, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, and Target. 
And if you want to see me make more videos about wrestling, you can send a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available, paperback and Kindle Unlimited, Isis, the main event. It's carnage inside of a steel cage when the goddess next door steps in the squared circle with the beast from the box of this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, the main event, in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, the man with nothing to lose. The man who rules the world runs with the irresistible force of a man with nothing to lose in this action-packed all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get the regular and variant editions of John Haynes, the man with nothing to lose on Amazon.com today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.